This is Holy Thursday. You may be wondering what is so special about this night. Most are familiar with the significance of Good Friday when Jesus was crucified, and of course, Easter Sunday when Jesus was resurrected. But Holy Thursday is very significant. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus led the Passover meal with the disciples. And during that meal, he gave us a model to follow by washing the disciples' feet. He also took a celebration that the Jews had been celebrating for over 1,400 years, and he inaugurated the new covenant. Jesus instituted communion, also known as the Lord's Supper. Jesus was also betrayed by Judas and denied by Simon Peter. Jesus sweated drops of blood in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus was arrested and dragged off to Pilate and then Herod. This is a night that is rich in meaning. I will be explaining more in tonight's message and we will be sharing in communion together. So please gather some elements to partake in the Lord's Supper. Bread and grape juice are commonly used. I have used potato chips and water before. And as we worship God on this holy night, let us pray together. Oh Lord God, we come tonight seeking you. And Lord, we know that if we seek you with all of our hearts, we will find you. And so we ask for your presence to be with us, that you would keep us away from all distractions, and that tonight we would meet in communion with you. And we pray this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt
In John 13, verse 1, it says, It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And so it was the Passover festival. In order to understand the Lord's Supper, we must understand the Passover festival. This festival celebrated the Israelites being rescued from Egypt. It is centered on the final night in Egypt when the death angel passed over. There's that word, Passover. It passed over all of the Israelites' homes that had the blood of a lamb on the door frames of the house. The Egyptian firstborn sons were not spared by the death angel. This finally got the attention of Pharaoh, and he released the Israelite slaves. The Israelites were ready, and they fled. This is how it is described in Exodus chapter 14. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That same night, they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire, along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. This is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. So the Passover festival is a celebration of the Israelites being rescued from slavery. Those who were rescued sacrificed a lamb without defect. Jesus becomes for us the perfect lamb of God who is sacrificed once for all people. Hebrews 10.10 10 says, We have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. 
Now, during a Passover meal, there are 15 steps to the meal. The Passover meal is referred to as the Seder. And when I was in college, I was able to participate in a Seder meal with a Jewish Christian rabbi. It was very interesting, and I hope you enjoy learning a little bit more about it. So Seder means order, and there is a definite order to all the 15 steps. The 15 steps are a combination of tastes, sounds, sensations, and smells that have been with the Jewish people for over 3,000 years. I will go over the 15 steps fairly quickly. So step one is the blessing over the first cup of wine or grape juice. And the English translation of the blessing is, we praise God, ruler of everything, who creates the fruit of the vine. Step two, the ritual hand washing without a blessing. This involves pouring water over your hands three times. Step three, eating parsley dipped in salt water. The salt water represents the tears of the Israelite slaves. Step four is breaking the middle matzah or flatbread. Step five, telling the Exodus story. This is the longest section of the Seder and it can be condensed to 15 or 20 minutes or it can be stretched out up to several hours. During this time, the second cup of wine is poured and consumed. Step number six is ritual hand washing before the meal, this time with a blessing. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, ruler of the universe, who has sanctified us with his laws and commanded us to wash our hands. Step seven is the blessing of the matzah. The English translation of the blessing is, blessed are you God, ruler of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And step number eight is another blessing over the matzah. Step nine, they would eat a combination of horseradish with a fruit and nut spread, often made out of apples, cinnamon, and walnuts. This represents the bitterness of slavery and the mortar that holds the bricks together as they built Egypt. Step 10, eating a matzah sandwich with the sweet fruit and nut spread and romaine lettuce to signify the bitterness and the sweetness of life. Step 11, finally they get to eat the festival meal. And this meal might include lamb, chicken, and matzah ball soup and hard boiled eggs. Step 12 is the eating of the matzah symbolizing the Passover sacrifice of the lamb. And step 13 is grace after meals and the third cup of wine. Step 14 is singing songs from the book of Psalms, specifically chapters 1 113 through 118, and they drink the fourth cup of wine. And step 15 is conclude the Seder with an additional prayer. Now let's go back to Jesus with his disciples in John chapter 13. This is starting at verse 2. The evening meal was in progress. So this is step 11 in the Passover celebration. And the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. And so he got up from the meal. He took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. So this is not in the 15 steps. Jesus is taking this party to another level. They have already washed their hands twice. 
Now Jesus is taking the role of a servant and is washing the disciples' feet. He is getting the disciples' attention. I am sure they are wondering what is going on. They have celebrated the Passover their whole lives. This is a new thing. Let's see what happens next. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. But Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. So we are all in need of cleansing through Jesus. We are all in need of forgiveness and grace. Jesus makes a very interesting distinction here between the body and the feet. Are you a part of the body of Christ? Judas was not, so he was not clean. Have you been washed by the blood of the Lamb? Are you clean? I hope that you have given your life to Christ and you are clean, but your feet might be dirty. Your feet are dirty because you have been walking in the mud of this world. While our body is clean and our salvation is secure, we must come to Jesus daily to get the mud washed off of our feet. Now in verse 12, it says, when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Wow. Jesus modeled how his followers are to be servants. This was a shock to the disciples. They had ideas that Jesus was going to storm Jerusalem and free the people from Roman rule. Instead, Jesus is sending us out as servants. Jesus is sending you and me out into the world as servants. I have to remind myself of this frequently. If Jesus can wash feet, is there any job that is too low for me? I try to lay aside my selfishness and thoughts of entitlement to discover God's mission for my life. It's not always what I envisioned, but God's mission always comes with a blessing. May you find God's blessing for your own life. Now back to Jesus and that Passover feast. There is some discussion about the one who will betray Jesus and Judas leaves the group. But the disciples still don't understand that Judas is going to the chief priests to betray Jesus. They believe that he is going to pay for the meal. And then we have another wow moment. Jesus says, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Jesus gives a new command. It doesn't really seem all that new. I mean, Jesus was asked earlier in his ministry what the greatest commandment was, and he said it was to love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind and with all of your strength and to love your neighbor as you love yourself. The disciples were still pretty confused. But to their credit, they had not yet experienced Jesus' death and resurrection. 
Because the new thing that Jesus commands is to love as Jesus has loved us. So we have the modeling of servanthood and we have the command to love sacrificially. I told you it was a big night. And then we get to Simon Peter. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. But then Jesus answered, will you really lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Don't you feel bad for Peter? He wants to be bold. He wants to follow Jesus. And we all know that he ends up disowning Jesus three times as Jesus foretold. We also know that Peter is reconciled to Jesus by the Sea of Galilee after the resurrection. I think this is included in the scriptures because all of us will disown Jesus at some point, but Jesus will invite us back. So let's go back to the Passover festival. We just experienced step 11 with the meal and the surprise washing of feet. Next is step 12, the eating of the matzah, or the bread that symbolizes the sacrifice of the lamb. Now we have to go to Luke chapter 22 for this. And this is verse 19. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus is saying, I am the sacrificial lamb. I am giving my life for you. When you eat this special bread that represents the sacrificial lamb, you will now remember me. In verse 20, in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. We are now on step 13 of the Passover feast. This is the third cup of wine. During the Passover meal, they will have four cups of wine and they all have a significant meaning. The first cup of wine is the cup of sanctification. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. The second cup is the cup of deliverance. I will rescue you from their bondage. And the third cup is the cup of redemption. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. And the fourth cup is the cup of praise. I will take you as my people. So this is the cup of redemption. Jesus renames this cup, the cup of the new covenant. And he is referring back to what Jeremiah prophesied in Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. And so we are adopted into the family of God and we can live under this new covenant. So this is a time of celebration, but we also remember that with this cup of redemption, it is also the cup of judgment. In Luke 22, 42, Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane and he says, Father, if you are willing, take this cup 
from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. The cup of redemption could only be poured out for salvation of all if Jesus would first drink the cup of God's judgment on all of humanity. Jesus sweated drops of blood. Jesus was beaten with 39 lashes. Jesus was crucified. He who had known no sin became sin for us. And you are invited in just a few moments to partake in the bread of life and the cup of the new covenant. It matters why we do this. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus broke bread. He gave it to his disciples. Take and eat. This is my body. He took a cup. Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant. It is poured out for many, for the forgiveness of sins. It matters how we do this. Let each of us look at our lives. Let us recognize our sin. Let us see the grace of God in the body and blood of Christ broken for us, poured out for our forgiveness. It matters that we do this. Let us eat the bread, drink from the cup, remember the Lord's death in our place on the cross, looking for his return. Amen. As we begin the Lord's Supper, let us pray together. O Lord God, as we come tonight to the Lord's Supper, we know that we've been walking through this dirty and dusty and muddy world. And we don't even have to ask you because you just come to us and you're washing our feet. We thank you that you are making us clean. And then we come to you just purified by you. And we come seeking you. Lord, be the center of our lives. And we thank you for your sacrifice, and we thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. And the Lord, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then in the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. As you listen to this next song, Reflect on your relationship with the Lord, and may God bless you during this holy week.
its breath Till that stone was moved for good For the lamb had conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who'd come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born Then the Spirit